Okay, hereby call this meeting to order. We'll stand and do the pledge. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll go through introductions. Or we want to start with that. We'll start on, we'll start right here. My name is Brenda Crawford, okay. city councilor. My name is Paul Keeper, I'm the mayor. It's Katie Norton, city councilor. Marta Barajas, the city finance director. David Norton, I'm a BCA board member. Kelsey Swallow, board and chamber. Paul Beagle, city council. Murray Kane, BCDA board member. Terry Briggs, BCDA. Lisa Middlesworth, BCDA. Karen Pettigrew, city manager. Jen Rollins, city recorder. Rick Stuckel, police chief. And we have some guests online. Looks like we have Leslie and Junior. And uh, who was the other one? They, they did. We'll call her Galaxy. Call them Galaxy. All right, so that takes care of introductions. I guess I'll turn the time over to Tori. Tori and Lisa and the BCDA. Yeah, so Chief, if you want to bring up the presentation, please. So we'll just start it off there, and this is our mission, and from there I'll just let Lisa take over the conversation on leaving the purpose behind DCDA and kind of what we're here for today. Um, so BCDA is a community development association. We are a 501c3. This organization was formed in 1999. There's been some form of a development um, corporation and boardman uh, for many years before that, but uh, BCDA is actually formed in 99, uh, 501c3. The mission of the BCDA is to beautify and increase the livability of the boardman community focusing on housing, commercial and retail development, and workforce training. The association collaborates with other organizations, municipalities, business leaders, and residents to support progressive development in the community. Are there any questions about that? So, so, we, yeah, so, go ahead. so we're here and we want this to be a very interactive conversation. So. If you have a question in the middle, just go ahead and stop us and, and ask us and we can talk about it and, and we'll go through this agenda that we have presented and have open discussion as well. So we want it to be completely um, open. Yeah, you can hit that next there. <coughs> go to next year. Next era, yep, hit that one. So these are some past projects, and these are the um, how much we've invested over the years. Some of those are from the beginning, and some are yearly contributions, and some are each project. And you can you can identify last year's projects and then this year's projects. So you can see that we really spread it out. Um, when I say school capital projects, that consists of big projects within the school districts when they submit an application to us and we review it and feel if it falls within our bucket. And um, we have five categories, right? We have recreation, beautification, education, education and business development and community development. So those are just some past programs. Um, as you see the youth sports, that is just what basketball so far, because we just started that, new, that's new this year to us, and that will continue to be a budget item moving in. We got a, um, a donation from the church 
and they are covering the cost this year and then moving forward we'll probably create a budget line to promote youth sports in our area the recreation where um it would be free play to um play to play so i would know, um addition to our numbers the basketball program has 150 kids from this year that is a huge number for our community. So it shows that free is big on recreation sports where people don't have to decide on what kids gonna get to play and not play. Because most um, most registration fees range between 25 to 45 to sometimes $55 a player. So a little bit more about BCBA. Um, when BCDA started, there was no funding sources. So if we did one beautification project a year, we thought we were accomplishing something. Um, Debbie Watson. Debbie Watson from Umatel Electric was instrumental in getting uh, the BCDA revived, and she would go out and get donations. Uh, so we could go out and do a cleanup project or you know put welcome signs in and we, we would pick some kind of beautification project. So we had $6,000, $7,000 to do a project. We thought we were doing great. Um, life has changed now and we're, we're the recipient of dollars from the Columbia River Enterprise Zone and that has ramped up um, over the years since that program has been instituted and funding uh, development corporations throughout the county. Uh, to do community enhancement projects, and we're now receiving a million dollars a year. So it's significant. It's a significant amount of money, and um, it's not something that we take lightly. We work hard to make sure that the dollars are going to um, places where they need to in the community. Um, we can talk a little bit about the um, community enhancement meetings that we have had over the years. Uh, Tori, we've got a survey board day. Our community people have asked for different things for our community, and some of those are right up there on the the screen that you see right there. Um, one of them was the dog park and the disc golf, and you know those are things that I was right now is the beautification for the Main Street. Oh, That's Main Street. South Main Street. That's what they've asked for. So in the signs, so we listen to kind of what they ask for in their surveys and. When they've come to the meetings and so forth, and so we've put money towards those projects and, and so forth. So, and so since 2011, we have been having that community enhancement meeting. Um, before that, we had a CEO forum that was done um, at the port with all of the industry leaders, um, and, and we decided we we needed to get the community together to talk about projects. And we did that at the port. We would spread out to tables and do uh, a roundtable discussion about projects. Um, we'd end up with a, a whole list of different ideas on the board, and then we'd let people at the end go put stickers on so we'd have some indication of what was the most popular projects that people wanted to have funded in the community. And um, I got a list here from 2011, 2015, 2018. Um, and in 2021, we did 2020. We did the community survey that Ross was talking about, and then and followed up with a meeting. So we will do that again this year. Um, watch for that survey to come out. It'll come out on Facebook probably, and and we'll go through the same kind of motions just to find out what kinds of projects people are interested in seeing because everyone has different interests in what they'd like to see in the community. So. The interesting thing, looking back over the years of these projects, is how many of them we've accomplished. Um, so I think we should be pretty proud of the fact that we're getting a lot of things done at board meetings this morning. You can go ahead to the next screen. We'll just go into future projects that we've kind of talked um, about with you guys. Um, these are just kind of discussion topics for tonight. That. Um, have been on our uh, project priority list and little pieces that we feel like is a great opportunity to have a conversation with you guys on your guys' involvement and just kind of knowing what we're doing in our partnerships. 
the library on the Columbia Avenue situation. <laughs> Karen, you want to take that one? Well, we set aside. <laughs> yeah, <I think. laughs> we set aside $250,000 to do what we anticipated would be a walking path similar to the one that's on Wilson Road going to the school, you know, a paved <coughs> strip with some barricades. And, you know, then the apartment complex went in and they put that strip of sidewalk in. So then people kind of thought, oh, well, maybe we ought to have a sidewalk over there. But I, I'm thinking maybe before we get done, we'll be back on the, the south side. And because the right of way will be easier to get. So anyway, um, I don't think that paving a sidewalk, I don't think 250,000 would do that project but it needs, to, it needs to rise to the very top of the list before, you know, there's a lot of people walking. You know, I, I don't drive around much in the night, but people are still walking. And the school district has been willing to uh, let us, if we need to cross there by the softball field, and come on the inside of their of their fence so that we don't have to go down into that ditch. But I do see people walking down in that deep ditch. Right so we're talking the west side. We're talking the west side of Columbia. Or the east the east side, south, excuse me, east side south, of Columbia. South side. I'm I'm either talking about the north or the south side. Yeah. And I'm talking about the south side and the but on the east, east of Maine, Maine. East of Maine. East of Maine. Yeah, Columbia, which goes east west. Yes, but the <laughs> south side of Columbia versus the apartment side. Oh. I'm going towards the plants, not downtown. Yeah. Which is so the original thought was we need a safe route to schools and we need a safe path for um, youth and adults both to get back and forth to the rec center. So something that could be a safe walking path all the way down to Olson Road. Which side would be easier to make your sidewalk, the north side or the east side? The north side is already done by the, by the apartments. On that end, yeah. So I'm thinking of the ditch and the coming back that way. So. That's really tough. That's, <clears throat> the jury's still out on that. All of the, um, if, if we could ask people in this room, we'd get five different answers on what to do. Question. And it's not our project. We're just supporting funding of the project. It would be a city project. This needs to be done. We put the sidewalk in. There's got to be a crosswalk to go to the apartments. Mm -hmm. We're going to put in those flashing lights like we've got on Main. Yes. So there would hope so. Hey, there's somebody in the crosswalk. Yeah, there would have to be. There's a lot of planning been going on for a couple of years about this project because you're going to have to get the traffic slowing down somewhere around the softball field. Right. Then, now that the apartments are there, you know, somewhere you're, they're going to cross. Then you have that traffic coming out of more estates. And so, yeah. It is, what is it, 45 until you hit 40? Until you hit the school zone? No. No. 35. 30 and then it goes up to 40 and California Porter. So where's the but I so the 40 probably doesn't stop until you hit Morrow State. Olson. I think, think it's Olson. Uh, Olson. Did it change it? At least Olson. <laughs> At least Olson. Yeah. The land, the old land Winston. It, it doesn't go past the cemetery, I can tell you that. Yeah. So like Karen said, I, this, is, it, this is a city need, uh, a community need, and there's been lots of uh, looks at this on what's the best pathway. Yes, the sidewalk is developed along the Fort View Apartments. And in front of the old BS, BS, BS what is it? BS, BBSI? BBSI. I think it's in front of there as well. They don't have sidewalks. No. 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 
So it might come down to a bit how much it's going to cost on either side. You might have to figure out, hey, what's your estimate on this side? And what's your estimate if you did it on this side? Now, I remember a discussion here a couple of meetings ago. We were talking about the sidewalk all the way down to uh, the rec center on, on Columbia yeah. Avenue. It's supposed, it's supposed to start on here and go all the way to here. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't want to get in the weeds on the project here, but we're just letting you know that BCD and Scott County aside to help fund this project to the tune of $250,000. And if it needed to be more than that as a, a helping contribution, we would do that. But uh, we've had the money set aside for about three calendar years now. Mm -hmm. Karen's going to remember this probably better than I do, but it's and maybe even Jacob would remember it better. But Jacob and I served on a committee where that we talked about that very sidewalk three years ago, just before Port View was getting ready to start construction, because they were deciding whether or not to put in the sidewalk or put in something different and they did. Well, on the south side, they kind of proposed a separated um, pathway, like the one on Wilson. Mm -hmm. And then when it, after it left the school and more on the states, you're getting into businesses that would have to have a, a driveway access into their business facility. And then you've got some elevation issues going up. So it, it's just, I, I know the police department might like it on the north side better. And some people might like it on the south side better. Some might want a sidewalk and some might want a separated paved pathway for safety it's it, it's a matter of <clears throat> dollars probably so we got money what makes set money. aside to do this i think bcd yeah. has contributed money uh, to this project the so, <clears throat> so you've spent money on it already though. no 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 we we have it set aside no, we have set, set, aside. set aside and the city has money set aside mm -hmm. we've not done anything with it we talked about it we need to get it done, I guess. If we've been talking about it for three years, we probably should get it done. Well, here's I'm going to tell you what the real problem is. Okay, it's, tell me what the real problem is. <laughs> it's like she says if I ask you and you and you, you're all going to have a different idea of where it ought to go and what it ought to be. So, probably cement sidewalks are almost going to be cost prohibitive. Okay. But if we had enough money, that probably would be the way to go. But like she says, when you start going down by the cemetery and on that side of the street, you know, like in front of J and D and whatever mm -hmm. that next place is and that, you know, they've been allowed just to turn off wherever and that will change. And they all understood that. But I think there's a lot of, we're back to getting the right of way and you know how much trouble we've had, that's, that will be the biggest holdup on this project. Again, we'll be getting the right of way to do, to do the project. If, if, even if we can set- Right away from people's property. Yes, because you, you know, some of them are built right out there <coughs> on the, I mean, the edge, practically the edge of the pavement. So that means you're gonna have to take and they're not going to want us to peel off part of their landscaping, maybe. And then, you know, you go on farther down. And like, like she says, when you get to the CID building and Allen Homes and that, that's high. So you have, you're going to have to cut that back. Well, I think the sewer line, well, I, I don't want to think, I know it runs along there. Now it's really deep along there, but there's, there's a lot to consider. And so I think if it came up on the city council's list of things, then we would start. I don't, I can't recall that I've ever had Anderson Perry look at this job and give me a, you know, Jacob. That's going to be important, I think. I know I would not want to walk across the street, walk across the street. No, we want it all, we want to, you'd only have to cross, well, I guess you could cross at Olson. 
you know what I'm saying, if it, if it ended up on that side. But in the beginning, we thought there would be a lot less crossing and danger mm -hmm. if it was all on. Oh. Yeah, so. But since we. Since Port View. Right. Yes. You've got a whole lot of people now living on the other side of the road, too. And and you brought up the flashing crosswalks. Yeah. BCD actually paid for the crosswalks that the city has now. Well, it's something that we've needed since, well, at least 20 years. And mm -hmm. and we have offered, and I think the police department's out doing surveys now to figure out the best places where we need the next ones to go and, uh, and how much they're going to cost us. I'm sure the prices have gone up. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the lighting on that road isn't the, the best either. Right. So, you know, in, in the wintertime, five o'clock, it's dark. And you'll see lighting here on our list as well, but we definitely, um, and also I know the police department is out looking at the dark spots in the community um, where lights might be out, where lights might be needed, and see if we can uh, make some impact training too. Yeah, because we can throw it on the list. I mean, just before we go into that, but and throw the list for Anderson of things they got to do too on um, maybe what's the best path for us to be able to start progressing on this so it doesn't take another three years yeah. to get it done. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that, Mr. Mayor. I think it should be done. <coughs> Find a way to get it done right, right away. Because yeah. you, you don't want to have a child coming home from school get hit and killed. And, and the, the darkness hours are getting closer and closer to the let out time for school. Don't need to have that happen. Well, and today I wrote a letter, uh, well, an email off to UEC about coming and giving us some ideas about Columbia Avenue. And, you know, because they don't like to put a light bulb in and then next year we say, oh, sorry, we moved it. But still, like you're saying, that is so dangerous down there. And so many kids, or people, just people, uh, walking and stuff. That it, uh, and I guess we started off with our hardest conversation. With our <laughs> hardest project. <laughs> I guess we'll just get it out there, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, like we talked about crosswalks, flashing lights. Um, another spot is Maine and Wilson because we have so many kids crossing from. Those are the flashing stoplights, right? Yeah. But we have so many kids coming from Anderson <coughs> to school three times a day. It's heavy traffic with AWS now out there. We got heavy traffic going out along Wilson. I just feel like that is a corner that really needs crossing going east and west there from one side of Wilson to over crossing Main right there. So that was something if you guys were interested, I think it might be going Well, on. I know you and I have talked about some of these things as well. Yes. Well, and too, now that's not a stoplight. That's those flashing. No, okay. it's a flashing stop sign that if we're going to have a stop sign, we might as well get a flashing stop light or stop sign with the solar. And we're talking flashing crosswalk. Crosswalk, crosswalk, like you know, crosswalk. like the crosswalks down. Like you're talking at the corner of Maine and Wilson. You want yeah. the flash and crosswalk? It'll look yeah. like the cross. It'll be look like the crosswalks by the high yes. school. And stuff I know. Like that. Yeah. Like notifies people. So you were thinking those instead of the flash and stop signs. Oh, well, we can do both. I mean, oh, those stop signs with that red. Yeah, I thing. saw that's like I went down that one on the road. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, that's a really busy area, so that's where I was thinking yeah. flash and stop signs, yeah. but I didn't realize you were also thinking crosswalks. the crosswalk. Yes. Well, that's I why you I, could still I, even add that in yes. there. I don't know. Well, actually, we need to address that. The traffic floor issue, but the city is working on Karen's working on uh, a traffic analysis from Columbia to Main Street or to Wilson so that they can address them. So it would it might not be smart to put those in right away if they're going to do a bunch of stuff that we need to do. So they need to be in. Um, that is a bad intersection, but I, I think we might be putting the cart before the horse mm -hmm. uh, by installing it if 
during our traffic analysis, we yeah. come up with something. You could easily do the splash and stop like stop signs, though. Stop signs not a problem. Yeah. Well, everything's there. The other you have to. As far as the structure, the yeah, yeah, yeah. But those with the round thing when it gets foggier and like you say, shorter days. Yeah. yeah, those are really easy because the the existing poles are already there. There's no additional wire or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a start in the right it's direction. Yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I had a guy run it today in front of me. He ran went straight through on both of these stop of that. Now we got the stop sign. And I saw him coming through the past. I just waited and did some blue red on her and the four way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's good. And the other um, thought we had was going ahead and doing it at Columbia Avenue in the Morrow Estates, um, wherever that crosswalk is going to be between the apartments and, and Morrow Estates to actually get that flashing in to get people used to the fact that it's going to be there. It's just a, it's a hard spot with visibility mm -hmm. and- Yeah, because you're coming um, around the corner going down. Yeah. The corner and elevation. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot of students in the morning that cross there mm -hmm. to get to the high school. And there's also a family who crosses there to get their kids to preschool. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have them haul off to the hospital because somebody gets stuck. Do they come to the preschool? Do they come up and then go across the field, go in Portman Avenue across the field? No, there's a preschool there on Dabbley inside Marlow Estates. Oh, there is? Yes. Oh, oh. Okay. so they cut through the cemetery? No, they just cross from Portview Apartments in into Marlow Estates and walk straight and then turn on to Dabbley. But on our foggy days, you know, mm -hmm. we've been out in Portman Avenue. Um, yeah. That's really hard to see somebody. Mm -hmm. Even with those lights starting to be You know, and that's a place where maybe a person should say, you know, it'd be helpful if you pack a flashlight with you. I mean, that's not hard. You know, people don't think, people don't realize that they can't be seen, I think, either. Well, if they dress like Martha on the mat like tonight, they kind of all do. <laughs> so going to the next one, um, the welcome to Portman signs. That was part of our wayfinding sign project that we did. Um, that was done. Those were already made about the time I came into the position and started doing that project. They are not a reflective vinyl like all the other ones are in town. So you notice when it's really dark right now, those don't even exist anymore. Um, I'm just asking if you guys, if you guys are okay or how the process would go, if we could add some lights to that. And I think they need to be hot powered in from electricity. I have looked at every solar option possible and I cannot find one with high enough lumens. And with our foggy days and our dark winters, we don't have enough daylight hours to run the lights long enough to illuminate those welcome to Bourbon signs. <coughs> um, that is something that people have brought to my attention over the last year those have been in. But they are unseen during the dark times of the year. So as we know, it's dark early and they just can't see it anymore. So I was thinking that some kind of electrical, they can do a up light that would just shine up on the signs and kind of illuminate them and give them a nice appeal. Um, but we I need some power to do that. So no, they won't let us back off the line off their light post anymore. So, uh, and that's how we've done a lot of lighting here in Norman, right. is they used to allow us to tap off the street light. Right. And they said that, that that's a done deal. But most all of them have a place for irrigation stuff. So if it's not battery operated, there's power to them. Because there would be power probably to the both sides of what we're talking about. I don't know about how Christmas and the power would work, but right. that's another subject. Yeah. So something I was interested in doing, and then also updating landscape. Um, people have requested having an updated landscape look. The old rocks that are behind the sign, uh, the current sign was there because it held the sign, the, the last signs of Sid Wilson Um 
Um, we can get some ideas of what that landscape could look like and remove some of that and clear it up and really make those signs pop when you come in and not be overgrown by the trees and um, the north side of the freeway we had some issues where those trees grew over and actually rubbed on the signs and popped some rivets. Um, the city's uh, maintenance crew is amazing and they were able to go in and do some rivets and fix it. Yeah, yeah. They're amazing. I'm just going to tell you, we've had the best group ever. <laughs> I love them. Um, and uh, they went and added some screws and some pop rivets and fixed those signs for me again because the trees rubbed on them. And so they did some cleanup around them. Um, but their recommendation to me is to clear it out and start all over. So um, I told them I'd look into it and come up with some ideas. And so. So that's kind of another idea. I'm just trying to work on beautification. So when you come in the apartment, it kind of is a fresh appeal to go along with our um, kind of just newer little that we're trying to acquire with our signage and wayfinding signs and kind of getting that alone. So. Any more conversation? Questions, concerns? Anyone online have any questions? Um, I'll just say that I'm 100% on board with the sidewalk along Columbia Avenue. I think putting it on the southern side makes the most sense with the crosswalk to access the north side. Uh, just real brief input without getting into the weeds, as you guys mentioned earlier. And then as far as you mentioned, the lighting and the landscaping on the signs, I've been behind that from the get-go and think that would create a real nice welcoming and cohesive look for our community throughout. Yeah. So I have means to, um, uh, Brian from Port of Mario is going to go on his site, he does little side jobs occasionally, and he will create a landscape design idea that fits Borman's uh, types of plants that grow well here kind of follows a scheme that's going through the port with the grasses and stuff like that. So um, there's opportunity to use him on the side and create a landscape for us. And that's a guy that has a degree in it. So he does it for a living. So. One, two things I would tell you on that. Um, the lighting, you gotta be careful with, you gotta meet ODOT yep. restrictions. Yep and also clearance issues for visibility. So we just have to make sure we talk to those off. Yeah, it's lumens, it's off of lumens. The lady didn't exactly know the lumen count, but she said that she would get me that lumen count. So, because it can't reflect too far and it can't go too wide and it has to be pretty direct, small direct lighting. So it might be just enough, like if it's electrical, um, powered in, wired in, hardwired in, it would just be enough to just have one probably on it. So. Going into our commercial retail, uh, that's something that's been a prior, um, priority here recently. Um, as you know, we don't have that many retail spaces for uh, new businesses to start up or businesses that are stuck in those small spots and little hidden, hidden spots. They like to come to the forefront and get out on street side visibility. And um, we've talked about doing some uh, commercial retail. So you want to take it over from there? Sure. So we we think that, you know, Boardman is a new community. We might not all know that here, but uh, we're not fortunate to have a bunch of old buildings along Main Street for little business incubators to start up in that start very high rent. So uh, the only thing that we can do now is go out and build some more uh, commercial retail strips so that those businesses have an opportunity to have some place to start and grow. And um, I think BCDA wants to make it a priority to go ahead and construct a retail space. And the, the size of the spaces could be very flexible at this point, but I would say anywhere from 700 feet to 2,500 square feet in uh, each space to be rented out. Uh, we have uh, had a couple meetings with more Development Corporation who is funding a building to go in Hefner that some of you might have seen. It will be a more of a warehouse style um, facility and more developments talking about uh, 
they've actually approved investing in board of engineering as well. So um, there'll be a good chance that we can get a, a lot of a building funded. And we're looking at lots right now. We have talked about some private ownership lots, and we talked to the city council about the possibility of a donation of uh, a city lot on Front Street. And we may be back to you to talk to you about more of those um, here really quick because that probably makes the most sense for uh, a retail strip with a lot of visibility. We have some people already interested in spaces. But um, I was in one over in Richland a few weeks ago, and it had crepes on one side and it had ice cream on the other, and it it was a hole in the wall. But you know what? It had four or five tables inside, and it it met the needs of of uh, what it needed to do. So it doesn't have to be huge spaces to give people an opportunity to start a business. Anyway, that's. Anything that you want to add there? I don't have anything to add to that. We just filled it with it. But <laughs> we see places for people to go. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. and other things to offer in Boardman. But uh, when you are an outsider moving in, like it used to be, we need internet or something like that. And that's accomplished. And this is something that we hear all the time. Is, like we need more options in Boardman, whether it's food, retail, et cetera. So. We used to think we needed a lot of dry cleaning, and now we'd just be happy if we had a beautician. So I don't know. <laughs> but there's those kind of businesses like a beautician and models and those kind of things that are just basic to a community. And yeah, so we need to make it affordable for them as well. You, you can't just build a building and expect somebody to pay $5,000 a month for rent. Yeah. and not be able to make a living off of that. And so we have to be able to provide them with the, the space that they need so that they can provide a service for our community and still make a living on it too. And what we've got now is not working, so. And obviously if there is private investment out there willing to make that um, investment in our community, we would love to have that too. Um, but it, like Ross said, it will increase the the per square foot cost to a business startup to try and get in there too. So with, with this option and community development, more development working together with the city, we can get a building built and offer a lower rate for somebody. Well, and I think we you just see that this we're hoping would entice a, a private developer to see how well this works and they would want to develop something thinking that, you know, so, I mean, it always, you know, kind of getting the ball to moving that they could see. Because I've had people come, uh, I don't know how many times talking about, well, you know, I'd like to build a little strip mall. What do you think? And I, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea, but they never do it. So, I think if we show them how that they we can get people interested. Mm -hmm. Well, I think people have to also understand that just because you build a strip mall, you they think, oh, we're gonna get this chain to come in this franchise, and it doesn't work like that. You have to have a usually a certain population and they have requirements for that. So, you know, asking, you know, for uh, Trader Joe's to come into Boardman is nice, but it's not going to happen. I mean, they can barely get one in Tri-City. So, I mean, we have to be realistic with our options as well, but also meet the needs. Mm -hmm. So, And you're right, and so of those franchises, um, somebody in Hermiston or someone in the Dallas could actually own the franchise that covers this area. Mm -hmm. So until they want to do it and give it up, it, you're right, it's yeah. not going to happen. And we, we look at the metrics, Tori has had studies done, and we borrow studies from the hotel or somebody else to, to look and see, you know, what what do we need to meet in order to get checks. I feel like we're right there. We have all these new communities, we yeah, have these close. new business. I mean, we're, we're close. Yeah. It's I just, don't think that the strip mall, how we're perceiving it is that, you know, you're right, we're not going to get trade shows to come here. <laughs> but we have some local people here right now that are in 
areas that they don't want to be that can be more sure. successful in a place like this. Sure. That's perfect. We have our own people that we want to be able to utilize that as well. And would it be great to have Trader Joe's? Yeah, or other chains come in here and be great, but we got to start someplace and start with some of our own and maybe they'll come. Exactly. And competition is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Competition makes every business healthier, I think. So um, I mean, we're not out there trying to attract someone to put somebody out of business. It's a matter of allowing the space for an opportunity to happen. Okay. So going on to the next one, uh, discussion, the uh, expanding recreation options in City Park. Um, the Marina is great to work with, but it's has some restrictions with the um, core and stuff like that. But I have probably over the last four or five months had people come in to, to the Safe Center and ask for pickleball. They are from Portland, they are from Seattle. And they are from Central Oregon, and they tour around and do pickleball, and they stay at our arena. And the guy's like, "I, we want pickleball." Well, then there's also a pickleball association in Oregon. Mm -hmm. There is a pickleball association all around our area, um, and I just think it would be a great addition to the city park. It kind of has the opportunity to expand in that area and add to it. We replaced the basketball court, and it made it a lot more appealing there. It's a full court now. Um, so it is pickleball is something that people have wanted. It's an up and coming event, a sport that really has gotten big and it's taken um, off. It is really taken off. Um, our local fire department would love to have a pickleball court. So um, uh, they currently have one inside the fire station. They roll the trucks out and make one inside. So, um, so that's just something that would you guys be of interest? And if something like that, I got a proposal together to maybe place at the city park. Is that an area where you guys would want it? Is there another space where you think you would want it? Or um right next to the basketball park. Just, yeah, that's great. So, there's a lot of open space there in that park, uh, especially since we lost all the trees now. <laughs> there's a lot of open space. Um but there's a lot of soccer kids play. I mean, you, yep. you really are going to have to keep in mind. You're above so the soccer. Need to be, yep. Up. It's up on the hillside. Yeah. It'd be up on the hillside, just down from the pickle or the basketball court between there and then the gazebo, kind of in that square open space there. The space, probably like a two court complex, look, two or three court complex. They still have a comment about it because they, they would still take away. <clears throat> yeah, that would it'd still take place. away places that yeah. they currently use. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they don't they get it all right. And there's multiple other fields around the community that they can use too. So. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out how to make it work for both. Yep. Yeah. So it's just another option. Um, I think it's a great addition to that park, especially since we lost so many trees. It's a need. It's an up and coming sport. Um, it's one of those things that. You know, you can kind of like the basketball court, it's pretty easy to sign a contract with it, so it wants to do the installation of it and oversee the project and have it like a local community. Um, Front Street Park improvements. And so there is not a play structure down there. Um, I think a play, a play structure is really needed down in that area, just be north of the splash pad between there and skate park. Um, I've had requests on our project priority list is revamping the skate park a little bit and then adding lighting down in that area. We have some light holes down in that area, but um, like we were talking about earlier, how dark that area is. I think that's an, um, if we add some lighting, would help with um, kind of things that happen at night. Um, and I think it would just kind of keep everybody a little more honest if there was more lighting down in that area. And then offering a play structure. I do know from working at the State Center, um, a lot of the families from that apartment that's just north of the splash pad and around that area, they come down Front Street all the way to the State Center and they use our play structure all day, every day. It, they're there all the time and they come in the evening times a lot and use it at night. Um, so it's a need and they come from that area every time. They walk that way or they either come from the rec center or they come down Front Street from across the soccer field 
to the safe center. And that community over there really doesn't have a park anywhere, does it? <laughs> so their park is that park, but it's the only park that really doesn't have a play structure or anything on it. It just has a splash pad. And they kind of use the splash pad as their play structure during the off season so they get to play and hang on the crossbars and stuff like that. So, um, and they also give kids more to do during the soccer events, events on those fields, too. Be a good addition for it, especially with everything that's going on down there. Yeah. And we're not talking about something to the tune of, of Funland Park and <laughs> you know, just an additional play structure or, you know, some other little objects out there would be great. Yeah. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Kind of like what they have at Woody River. They play fun. Yeah. yeah. So the guy that is doing the uh, Funland Park in Hermiston is from Portland. He is the one that we're getting all the dog park equipment from. He's Pretty nice guy. I talked to him quite frequently. He's coming through here all the time. So he said he's going to stop through and look at these different parks in the areas for me and give me some ideas of what he feels fits in those areas within the budget that we're really the parameters that they want on the budget. So he's going to be coming through here sometime soon um, just to do some more work down on the front lines. So. Hey, can I ask a quick question? Um, in regards to the Front Street Park area, are there any rules or opportunities for like food vendors, like an ice cream truck or a taco truck or something to pull up there during the summertime, during the weekends or the days where those areas are busy to encourage people to hang around a little bit, enjoy the splash pad, have an opportunity to get something to eat? We tried a few years ago to have a little farmer's market place down there. Um, and I think that Jim at the store actually was hiring somebody and they put food down there. Art supplied the building maybe or something. I don't remember all the dangly details, but it. So the building you're thinking about is mm -hmm. where the fruit stand yeah. was mm -hmm. and um, Art and Kathy Neal were both involved in that project, yeah. and um, it, it's being relocated down the street. Um, the court bought a lot, actually, from the city, right across the street from the city center. We're buying a lot, and um, so we're thinking that that uh, fruit stand will be put in that parking lot and be available, and it might be a really great place to have a farmers market in the future again. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lot more visible from the freeway. And then we're expecting with the addition of the conference center onto the safe center that we're going to have a lot more activities in that area. So hopefully it'll be a good spot. Well, and it was really just at the end of what it was. I don't know the number. What are they called? Third street, third street. street that doesn't go all the way through. Right. It was more like a I think the original <laughs> intention was to have a building there to sort of have someone available in case. A child or family needed something, or just another set of eyes in an otherwise unobserved location. So it was in the, it was kind of down that hole and not on the regular path for people going right. from home to work. Mm -hmm. So it didn't work great as a group stand, um, but hopefully this one will. Well, maybe more somebody needs to contact somebody like Christy who runs her her. Or ice cream truck or something, maybe to you know, if you park over there for a couple two times a day or something, you know. Yeah. I mean, if people are interested, obviously she can set up shop for a little while and go run, come back and mm -hmm. and and sell ice cream there with the kids. So right now, Borden doesn't have a business license, right? So mm -hmm. even someone that stops with their back of their truck pulled up selling. Or their little push cart. Yeah. You know, Hermeson started there based on where, and they bought it for a long time, um, but they ended up designating a food plot area and fenced it off. But there, there are a lot of trucks that come through here with food and stop at businesses mm -hmm. for lunchtime or breakfast. Well, and that would be my idea is to create an it. Um, a location, a venue where people could have an experience and not just do one thing and then pack up and leave. Like they would be able to stay for quite some time. 
and make a day of it. Because I think that's kind of what they have at the park. They have a little snack shack there that offers snacks and goodies and drinks and stuff during the day, during prime times and weekends and stuff. And um, but yeah, we can discuss ways of how that we can incorporate that and kind of create that area to be the fun gathering location. Mm -hmm. Right, as you know, right now we've got the soccer field and then a parking lot and then Dog Park, and, Dog Park, and then we're going to have another parking lot on the corner. So, good uh, opportunity and space. And then lighting, lighting is always a discussion, um, like we talked about. So, it sounds like Karen has a plan already, kind of starting that conversation. <laughs> So your park guy who's going to go around and look at all the parks and talk about different ideas for them, mm -hmm. um, is he going to look at the one over on Anderson as well? Uh, has in the past has not been a park project priority list because we tried we just mainly done Marina City and then this area right here because that feeds the three locations of Portman and that this one here kind of serves that area. Um, I do know that Bailey Park. Development for Shelley has mentioned about doing some development expansion of that park because it's going to um, benefit his his uh, housing development. Um, he's mentioned that to me a couple times, so I'm not sure. And it just hasn't been one of our priority spots. I mean, it's pretty good discussion, maybe. It is pretty good. Leslie, there is a new park going in. Well, I don't know if it's Rome Street or Anthony. Rome. Um, it's south, right south of uh, Shelby Pierce's house, right on that corner where the little bump is. So that's yes, that and that little those two lots right there where it shifts from Rome <laughs> to Anthony. There's green space right there designated for their park. So on this three on this discussion, we kind of have on another slide is, is or on the agenda kind of open discussion, and I kind of forgot to add it. Um, is uh, South Main Street on our community project survey was the number one topic of discussion. Um, it's been on the project project priority list for probably the last four or five years that I can see, um, and we. You know, we were interested in putting some effort into that with you guys and, and developing that and making that more appealing. So I don't you know if you guys have to break it down into pieces and pieces, pieces, and, pieces of it. And, and Karen, you think you've got some plans? You've got some plans for South Main. I, I wouldn't do anything to South Main until it's paid. I mean, that's the bottom line. And then if you want to beautify it, you want to help. Buy, buy trees or do that, but that will be a package deal. I just had Anderson Perry refigure that, and we're still, we're about a million nine, so we're still two million dollar figure. And the two million would take it, you know, from where we put there to uh, Wilson. And when we do that, See, everything turns into something else mm -hmm. because we really should think about a roundabout there. Whether you like it or not, you might, this might be a consideration of a roundabout at Maine and Wilson because you're not going to get less traffic, I doubt. I mean, you will get some when we finally get to build, you know. Oregon Trail. Yes, Oregon Trail, but it, yeah. So anyway, but I don't even care if you think about that right now. I think we'll try to make the, the wider, you know, like the turn, if you're going, you know, it'll have a bigger apron there. So those kind of things will be, will make it much nicer and we would try to make it a lot safer. So, yeah, but, um, you know, if, if right now you were thinking about, I don't know, ripping out the little white, that fence thing, I guess you could do that. 
you know, that would be a project, but. So you couldn't put a, a sidewalk in the gutter and tell you that we're yes. going to be. Yeah, I mean, it, most everything depends. And when we do the paving, we intend to do, you know, scrubs on each side, you know, sidewalks, like some landscaping and that kind of thing. So I know people are sick of waiting. I mean, you know, I keep saying that's not when I got this job was that street out there. But uh, yeah, we just, we've not even come close to having the money. We apply for grants all the time and uh, aren't successful for some reason. And, uh, but hopefully we can get enough money saved this year. See, and that's gonna be the deliberation for the city council. Okay, you really want Main Street done and we need to do Columbia Avenue. And those problems, then you're going to get needing to do front streets because of the traffic volume. So you're going to have a lot of that kind of infrastructure. We've done pretty well. We've gotten our water sewer, that kind of thing, pretty well under construction. So now it's streets. So you know, we'll have to sit down and look at our budget and kind of figure out like, okay, we could, you know, we could probably do this and because uh, this next in a couple of days, uh, Merkley's people will at least be here for the ribbon cutting for the AWS. And so I have asked to meet with them earlier because I, I, I want to know what we're going to do about <coughs> a lot of infrastructure things. And if we would be lucky enough, here might be our saving grace, is if the federal government and all the money they're wanting to spend, if we could attract some of that. You know, because the money we can get now, you can't spend on our streets. I mean, the money we have now that they've sent us, you cannot use it on that on streets. So, and I can't, the other thing I can't do is I can't take that money and put it on the bond issue and take the bond issue money and put it out here because that was also water and sewer. So, we just have to. Hopefully. Maybe hopefully we can use some of the Pres money that we can. Yeah. Hopefully, anticipate that we get maybe we can start earmarking some of that and really start working hard as the council start earmarking some money. So, maybe in two years, we have I think two, two million, two and a half million. Yeah, I think two years <clears throat> we could probably do that if, if we can get some money in the press for sure. And we can make, yeah, a lot of really good progress. The, Karen, the hardest the front streets, you know, because they're gonna they're gonna come forward whether we want them to or not. And so Karen, can that federal money be used on sidewalks or bike paths? No, that's considered streets. Yeah, that's part okay. of the streets. Okay. So another project that uh is not on our agenda right now and should be is North Main Street and a project that we've wanted to do for several years is add attractive lighting, which requires electrical. Um, so another big ticket project, but something that um, we'd like to see that make our uh, community a lot more attractive. And that would be down on the high school side. On high school side. Of Main Street. And when we did that, that's for sure when you would put in extra power for those corners to run flashing whatever you might need. Anything else that we've missed that you guys kind of see something that we could partner with or any discussion? Anything? Questions? 
<laughs> I think you guys have done a really nice job, honestly, with a lot of things I've seen, like the signs and the, the you know, just all the art deco pieces, like on the library and things like that. All those little touches set us apart from other little small towns. And so I, for one, I'm really impressed with that. So we just wanted everyone to give a chance to have this open discussion and, and you can see what and we're not trying to <laughs> step over the top of the city council ever on a project. Um, if we have money, we just want to go do it and get it done. Um, and sometimes if, if we don't take the proper process, we apologize now. Um, just remind us that you're the city council and you have to authorize that. Um, Anyway, uh, David, do you have anything else? Marie's pretty new to our board. <laughs> yeah. um, if you don't know Marie, she's a volleyball coach at high school and she works at uh, Three Mile. Yeah. And do you have any other projects and other interests you want to talk about? Uh, no, I think we're covering it. Well, I was thinking that we can partner and get. I think we can accomplish more projects that we really want to do for our community. And that's what it's all about is um, making this uh, community a better place, more attractive for people who want to come and live here. And, you know, I got managers in my plant that live in Tri Cities. I'd like to be living more than not Tri Cities. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's another question. Thank you. Um, I just think that this, all of these projects are really important and have a place in our community. So I appreciate everything that BCDA and the board is doing and has done thus far. And I think it speaks to the importance that I would like to request that city council have a meeting um, just to identify our priority projects and how we're going to move forward. And that means what is our mission and what are our, our objectives so that we can ensure that all of our decisions going forward are related to those objectives. Uh, and I just got the Heifer Gazette this morning, and I don't know if any of you have had a chance to read it or if it's circulated in other department, but the front page article is about the top 20 taxpayers in the county. And Amazon Data Services is contributing now over $11 million a year um, in taxes back. Um, a couple highlights in the article it said uh, there's over 100 new homes in uh, North Warren County. So, you know, Oregon has a lot of those. Leslie, you probably have a real good handle on the, the housing data, but. Um, all of these things are giving us the ability to have a, a nicer community here. And I just want to thank everyone for their hard work. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, next thing priority on the BCBA is we are going to be creating a survey again and circling that around for a while. We'll get the results from that. We'll share those results with you guys. And then from that, we take those results and that creates a community that, um, a community workshop and discussion again like we did last year where we open up to the community members and they can really give their input to us and we elaborate on the project they are requesting and so that is the will probably be happening here in the next couple weeks and then probably hopefully by have a community discussion by the beginning of the year get past the holidays and have that meeting again and then off of that that creates our project priority list and um since we kind of been getting all these I gotta say that majority of our projects on our project priority list are done. Um, besides those big, big ticket items that just keep paying that we can't, um, you know, have to go and finish yet because they're such big ticket items. But um, we're just thankful that we can continue to offer what we're doing and give the community input. So that's what we'll be doing next. And so if you guys we share, we just ask you guys to continue to share those with your contacts so we can get the results and get a lot more people involved in those surveys. And the more we have in our surveys, the more opinions we get and the better list that we get to create to make our community better. So I think it's shocking to look at the cumulative numbers on some of these projects too. $1.9 million for yeah. the fire program and yeah. I don't know how much it 
business is in it. And she can go back to that slide. Um, so we spent a lot of money on broadband already. And um, as you know, Portman was looking <coughs> to get a grant to help put some new broadband in the community. And we want to continue to expand that um, and make sure that, that we're really covering uh, city limits and getting outside the city limits. Yeah, they still can't get it to the mayor's house. Yeah. That's really crazy. But I've mentioned that to them all the time that you can't get into the mayor's house. And they have not gone down. They're, they're, they're picking up the easy stuff. Spot, so. <laughs> well, I saw them drop the wire right outside my house. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, as part of this project, your problem is, is that you do the hydro system. So when you do fiber direct, there's very minimal return work that you have to do to fix any of that equipment. But when you do a fiber hybrid with wireless modems and routers and stuff like that, his, he prides himself as customer service. So when you have somebody that's like, hey, my, I don't have internet today, his priority is to go get that guy because he doesn't go get that guy. You know, his, his internet was down one time, I think, for an hour. And I was like, he just got demolished on social media. I'm like, it's been down one time. And <laughs> like, you know, he's down every day. So. <laughs> We, we call them once a month. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I email me today. I'm like, email him back and find yeah. out what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he's working Can I interrupt yeah. and just make sure that Junior's question is answered? I don't think it's been addressed yet. It's in the chat. It's like Then we have a plan for the full reader board structure. <laughs> If, if I think if I would say the word, we would tear it down. What I really would like to do is find something that would just say the temperature and you know not like lots of things like it used to. But it's every day you go by there, it, you just we just as well think about tearing it down. So I have an opportunity that was brought to me. It's I don't know if you guys have heard of super signs. Super, there's three super signs in Huntington. They are solar powered signs. The fan's about eight feet tall. And on one side, it has your city map and what's available in your area. And you can offer advertising that helps cover the cost of the sign. The other side is a e, e littering, it's called, where E paper where if you can go in and like say we're an A and as a chamber can manage the sign. She can go in and update a calendar so it has calendar events. It has if you have a flyer that needs to go on, you can put a flyer, you can do a newspaper article on it, you can do the city temperature, you can do the city population, you can do anything on these super signs, all by solar, and they're really attractive and I can make them look blue and follow the same um, design that we are currently having with our wayfinding signs. That's a great way to interact with community. And so, um, like I said, Carson has three of them right now. Um, we're getting ready to tear out the um, kiosk board up at the State Center and replacing one there and kind of be our trial versus, um, spot one. But another one I think is right there because the high school kids cross right there is the main cross spot where I think we really could catch people advertising opportunity and they're attractive and they're, they're you know, they're kind of new kind of edgy that kind of people are like what are those and so they're kind of they're really attractive where is that person um that one by the new omg burger yep um, yep right burger. down on the on our whatever on our main street but the others the, the decorative street, street that yeah. i did mm -hmm. there's one on decorative street there's one over by mckinney park and then there and i think that is by the fire station somewhere there and there's one that, Somewhere else, I haven't found that one yet, but there's three in there. So they're pretty, they're pretty neat. Um, so is, is Junior asking because he wants to do something with that? Or? Do you have an idea, Junior? I mean, well, my, my concern is that it blocks the view of traffic. Uh, it's, it's difficult when you're coming up Boardman Avenue to see if anybody's coming without being in the crosswalk. Okay, yeah. okay, now I'd like for you to observe, because I have this argument all the time, that if you're going to allow parking in that parking lot, and you cannot 
I mean, those people need to have parking for that business. That bench and those rigs that are parked along that street are the obstacle. It is not that sign. I actually would agree with Karen. I pull out there all the time. And I, I can get in a wreck any day of the week right there because there's usually a big white pickup truck in the very first parking spot. Right, right at the corner. It's and all you generally cannot see through it. I, I think it's important to remember that we're doing a traffic study mm -hmm. and it's going to address yeah. a lot of those issues. Yeah. Because I'm afraid, I'm afraid what you're going to find out is Borman is going to get his traffic control device that everybody wasn't really thinking they would have. So, um, and I think that would be a good solution now. I mean, who knew we were going to have this much traffic? <laughs> I would like to point out also that that big white truck and the other one that parks there in that very first spot, I believe, are primarily there for security sake. Um, there's better lighting in that area, especially at night and um, more visibility. I'm just saying I've been in the corner. <laughs> you cannot see through the white truck. I can see from an aesthetic standpoint, though, like how long do you leave something that's dead like that? Um, there, that, yeah. that's, that would yeah. be my thought with it. Yes, I agree with that. Is that we either need to find somebody that can do temperature and time day on it or, or take it down? And public works will would take it down for it. So, that like, Take it down, move it to some other place, make it another organization that might want it. They're, you know, it's rough. It's, it's, it's unfixable. It's a very old type of tectonics that parts aren't even available for it. So, if we really want to improve something there in that corner, take the box off. I feel like if we want to do something, we could really improve the high school reader board on the other corner where it can utilize sports, the high school, the community. And really, where it's visible by a lot of people to turn that corner and kind of in a pretty good location. So, I mean, that's an opportunity for an upgrade right there. Yeah. That board is pretty old, too, and it, it's pretty dated on the style of burgers that's on it. That goes all the way back to the Lemons. 2008. Yeah. So, there's an opportunity. We want to be able to have date, time, where it kind of rolls and does like a rolling one, like one of the station where we have date. Time, temperature, events. But but I think you're missing. It's one thing at the state center to have events and stuff, but I have to tell you, people complain all the time about having events on that one up there and they never could read them. I've got to go to the service station and stop. That is totally useless to me. And I think like the new one we put out here, we part, I mean, everything is in huge letters. Mm -hmm. So when you're driving, it's, it, you're gonna, I mean, you're not gonna have as many nice flyers. And we're not the Chamber of Commerce either. You know what I'm saying? My job's not advertising particularly. But yeah, I think that that one at the high school could be bigger and better. And, and if somebody wanted to keep it up, our problem was like you say, it got so outdated that we couldn't uh, get a new part for it. Yeah. And then probably a discussion that will be based on the result of the traffic study. Yes, I well, and I'm sure he's gonna, yeah. And I think that, like you say, if we can't make it work and I don't have time to, find somebody that knows how to do that because they want 50,000 otherwise. And I don't want to invest 50,000 in a reader board there. What's the time in traffic study? Would you write it a couple times? Or, yeah, when can they do that? Study timing? When they can get it, you gotta get a contract together, they have to schedule it. Uh, I, I, my guess is it's gonna be another I don't think we see mid January probably. Yeah. Because he did the one. We just had a meeting with them. For 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 it, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And they kind of like to do it in prime time. So, like, the winter time isn't going to give you the most accurate number as, like, spring or middle summer.
summer or something like that. So well, and, and we don't want it during Christmas break. No. Because that's not going to address the issue of the traffic from the school. School. I mean, so yeah. there, there's several things. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be well. We just had a meeting with them. It seems like last week or week, no, it was week before. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's going to take some time. Uh, but it's needed. And um, I mean, some of the areas that we're talking about probably aren't going to be there anyway um, because of you know what they come up with the plan. The one roundabout that they talked about that intersection would take out not only that <laughs> that yeah. sign, but it's going to take out the high school sign and and, <laughs> and, and, and have to push it further back and, yeah. because you got commercial vehicles there, so you got to make a roundabout big enough for commercial vehicles. Yet you, you got to take in consideration. Uh, the traffic coming off the freeway, um, you can't back them up too far. Um, so there's several things that they've got to do to try to uh, uh, alleviate this. So it's going to take them a little while to come up with a plan. And uh, um, that's, to me, that's the most pressing intersection in this city. Uh, it's the most dangerous, in my opinion. There's a sugar uh, overpass improvement. That's already been asked for. <laughs> I would hope it. I would hope somebody, but just us, would think that it, that's important. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we get some infrastructure money from the federal government mm -hmm. when they start digging out the big funds. Well, because we have, I mean, we have plans that are ready to go this time. This isn't like, you know, like the last time this all went around. You know, we didn't have any plans on the shelves. And man, do I have plans now. I mean, mm -hmm. I could, if you gave me money, I was not being able to find workers. Yeah. <laughs> well, well if you're right. looking at grant dollars, you have to look at every opportunity that you can. Um, you need to use the school um, yeah. as a grounding point for a, a grant and safety. Well, and, the, and the problem we face is that the overpass, it's a federal, it's not, it, I mean, we can't get anything unless we get the feds to pay for it. And it really needs to be a four lane mm -hmm. overpass to address a lot of those issues. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you do that, you've got to extend your offering. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes oh, yeah. into that. So yeah. uh, Karen's been uh, talking to our, our uh, federal leaders and our state leaders saying, hey, I need some money to fix this issue. So uh, it's, it's, it's in the progress, but who knows when and if we'll get the money to do it. You should have scheduled a ribbon cutting for AWS with Mark Lee right around when the high school gets out. Yeah. yeah. And he's coming off the freeway and trying to get there. And he's going to yes. Karen to, to the center at about 3.30. <laughs> yes. Uh, our ribbon cutting starts at 4, so <laughs> he is sitting down in the middle of that chaos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell them about a quarter after three. Yeah, oh, you must go now. It's <laughs> this <Stay center> now. <laughs> Good luck. It's only a mile. Well, you can start looking it. So I'm hoping that we address some of your questions about BCDA. We want to continue to do projects in this community that just make it a better place for all of us to live. Um, we go through this formal process to look at what people want. We try and, and get those accomplished. And then out of the blue, we get a call from, you know, my, my neighbor is a soccer coach and he's like, the regulations are changing for soccer field size and the OPC field needs new soccer goals. Hey, can you fund that? So we're going to be getting a request to, to fund new soccer goals. So we, we will try and do as many of those recreation opportunities um, that make things easier for people. But thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, if, if I can put in a plug, I would like to put in a plug for maybe your park guy can give some advice about that park over on Anderson, Anderson because it. <clears throat> Despite many of its other shortcomings, um, it's very uh, antiquated. It could use a full upgrade. So, and I don't know that, um, you know, some of the other city parks are just city. So, if it's a city park 
and we have developer. I mean, it's nice to have the developer shoulder part of that, but it would be nice to look at that because it's pretty sparse. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, maybe even you know, through that part, maybe you saw a kid that comes down to Florida Drive and goes from Main Street and come to this part here. I mean, it's kind of like a big figure, but that is not the community, so they don't have to go that far. Yeah, I mean, this was a nice addition. We also have both grade schools, so most of the population that lives on this side of Maine is very well taken care of in the parks department, even if it's a bit of a jaunt. But the kids that are on that side are, are and there's lots of them, are without the same resource. And more coming in. And more risk, they have to cross it, either Oregon Trail, a dirt path through Mon's property, or at Wilson. And so. Is there anything else anybody would like to share? We see the eight ladies, you all finished? I just want to say thanks for taking the time to be with us. Also, All right, with that, I'll pull this meeting. Uh, Thank you.